How many years did you serve? I was in the DOC for about eight and a half years. Okay, eight and a half years, wow. And so describe what that road was like um, inside up until the point you came in contact with the power of people. Um, I, I think the, the, the start of that journey was very rough being in the county and trying to understand the legal system and uh, trying to console my parents, my family about this whole situation. In addition to dealing with the shame and the uh, just the trauma that you know was caused for everybody all around and trying to cope with this situation. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of pain internally and externally and uh, I felt um, lost and alone because isolated from family members, you can't see your family. So yeah, it was a really uh, dark time for me. And then also just about everybody who I met and encountered was in some state of suffering or despair, you know. And uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, and, and when like you get a lot of people together with the same amount of like, or, you know, varying amounts of pain, it, it's, it's a total mess. So, um, you know, going through being introduced to the prison system and, you know, trying to get past all of the uh, stuff that you've seen on TV or movies and, you know, the reality of what it really is and adjusting to that. And then uh, I think for me, a lot of it was I would say at first I tried playing cards and uh, watching TV, working out, all these other things that would like take my mind off of my situation and you know what was really hurting me inside and uh, trying to draw, read, uh, you know, socialize with other people and trying to find a new norm and yeah, it, it was uh, just just kind of a place where it's lost people with further, uh, you know, confusion and other lost people in there. So, mm -hmm. so what was the dynamic uh, inside that attracted you to POP? When I first saw um, POP, I, I came to Fairboat and was moved there, and I, I knew some of the guys from uh, the closed custody facility, Stillwater, and, you know, seeing them there, connecting with them, I, I saw that some of my, uh, you know, uh, guys that I knew, you know, kind of had a glow to them and like, oh my gosh, you know, they're a lot happier. And is it just because of being a, more free to walk around? And, you know, I came to find out that it's not just that, you know, they were being treated differently, you know, they, uh, staff and uh, the way they carry themselves was a lot different and um, I really found out what it was when I signed up for the class and I was able to get in there. And the very first class, hearing uh, you know, Shane speak and just kind of share about you know, what he knows and what he sees and just hearing everybody else talk, that was powerful because um, one, he, he treated us like human beings and people and really like uh, remembered our names and, you know, was authentic in trying to reach out and understand us. In addition to that, I, I think that um, the message and the place where he spoke from really touched me deep inside and, and struck me right where it was hurting, you know the, the kind of hole in my heart and the thing that I was carrying around. Uh, and the reason why that was so powerful was because he spoke to us from understanding the system that was oppressing a lot of people and putting them in prison. And, uh, you know, the, the, the way I grew up, you know, being poor, and all the different struggles that we had. And, and he knew, you know, 
those struggles and was trying to reach us and just, you know, speak to us in a caring manner and, and just uh, honestly, you know, uh, and it wasn't anything like uh, religious or patronizing us. It was just really authentic. And that really, um, yeah, it really uh, connected with me and um, what I needed. And so after you completed the class, you could have just went on about your business. Um, what made you stay and continue to remain a part of the Power People movement? Well, I think part of that is that once I learned about myself and was able to kind of work through my own issues, I was able to understand my own personal power and saw that I can help somebody else out who may have been in my own shoes, struggling, suffering, and trying to find their way home. So, you know, I, I thought that, you know, I could make a difference in somebody else's life and help them out. In addition to that, it, it was just something that, uh, you know, as I understand myself, I knew that that's what I like to do. Right. I like helping people and uh, connecting with people. So that's really uh, what uh, has kept me engaged with the group and engaged with POP. Right. So can you think of any ways that POP may have been able to support you on any level? <laughs> POP has helped me out in so many ways from like being in there and just uh, helping me to better understand myself, helping me understand my relationships with others, family, uh, you know, cellmates, and even like uh, people who are in positional power, who are authority figures and understanding that, you know, they have responsibilities. And then, you know, some of them have their own issues that they have to work through. So that really helped me navigate a lot of these situations that in the past I had trouble and I seen others having trouble navigating. And then uh, I, beyond that, I would say uh, POP has helped me. Uh, it's really changed my life because when I came home, I was trying to go work at a factory and trying to finish my education that I had started so long ago and uh, make microchips. But, you know, through the encouragement and what, you know, Shane saw in me that, you know, I had a passion for helping people and he encouraged it, he nurtured it. And it was, you know, through some of that, in addition to uh, employers not wanting to hire me for some of those positions too, and not even wanting to give me a chance, even though I've like jumped through all the hoops and hurdles, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it was a nonprofit that really, uh, you know, gave me the opportunity to like show them what I got. And once that happened, you know, it was also part of like Shane's relationship with the nonprofit that uh, they was willing to, uh, give me the chance because they knew pop guys, you know, carried themselves differently and had leadership. And from there, I just kind of embraced that side of me in helping people and helping people get through their uh, struggles and navigating all these like hurdles and barriers out here for, you know, uh, just about everything in life. And uh, I became a workforce coach uh, and then, supervised training programs and then uh, I started uh, getting into relationships you know coming to group and POP has helped me navigate a lot of those relationship struggles so much so that you know it, it helped me really uh, found find my foundation enough to be able to uh, commit to a woman and uh, a marriage and now a f being a father you know and my life has uh, drastically changed 
within these six or seven years that I've came home and I'm a homeowner now, I've been given numerous awards, my family relationships are in a, such a much stronger place and I feel secure that I can help out others and I, I feel like um, uh, I'm, uh, I, I think living the good life exactly is what I would describe it. Absolutely. So where do you think you would be if it wasn't for POP? I would probably be at a factory, uh, you know, punching in at a certain time and punching out and then uh, feeling overwhelmed or being bored. Um, because as I think about my past jobs where I did those similar things, they may have paid me well, but it didn't feed my passion and uh, what I really was uh, enjoying to do. And um, I would also be just another uh, cog in the machine of just you know going through the daily motions. Whereas now I'm in a position of leadership where I can influence and change policy and I can uh, also stand up for uh, the equity and the you know, equal rights that you know, people deserve and fight for these things that uh, can bring about equity to our community. Powerful. And I mean, I could think of so many, but can you just list a few milestones or accomplishments that you've been able to um, accomplish in this span since you have re-entered back into society? I, oh, there's so many. I mean, it was just being able to complete my, uh, you know, when I came home, I had a uh, five-year plan, right? And I wrote out like these things that I wanted to accomplish and being able to check those things off, uh, it was powerful because I felt like I was making progress and doing and following through with my word and what I was, uh, you know, planning for myself. And as I checked off each one of those as being in a relationship uh, having secure housing, getting a car, getting a job, uh, that was huge. And then finally being free, breaking free of the DOC system and uh, getting my right to vote back. Yes, sir. Yeah, and that was powerful to be able to vote and then um, travel. You know, I, I've traveled to Cambodia to help out guys who've been deported. You know, I've been to Puerto Rico, I've, you know, been to Italy, and it's something that I have never even, like, like, my world prior to all this was just, like, Minnesota and maybe, you know, some of the other states. But now, you know, I feel like I'm a global citizen. And, you know, there's been uh, various organizations in the community that has kind of seen my growth and my... Uh, efforts to create change in the community and I've been uh, awarded various awards. I think one of the most prestigious ones that I've gotten was the uh, Virginia Binger uh, Unsung Hero Award from uh, the McKnight Foundation and uh, they gave me $10,000 and that was huge because you know, I, you know I did all this stuff because it was the right thing to do. You know, I didn't do it for any awards or anything like that. And, you know, I, I felt good that I was making an impact and making a difference and to see other people recognize me for that. And then also to be able to thank the people who are important in my life. I was able to uh, bring Shane to the award ceremony and like acknowledge, you know, the help that he has given me and acknowledge the help that my parents had given me. So that was huge. I, I really... Uh, I'm happy and proud and that was something that I was able to acknowledge that you know the nurturing that you know so many people have put into me has paid off and here I am. Wow. Last question. If you could say anything to Dr. Verna or Brother Sam Price, what would it be? I think if I could say anything, I would say Thank you, Dr. Verna, and thank you, Shane. 
you both have put so much time, energy, and resources into nurturing us. Uh, each of us is a seed in the community, and now we are growing. We are not just growing, but we are thriving. And I think it's now time for us to reap the rewards and harvest the fruits of your labor and I just want to say thank you, you know, your efforts and your um, wisdom and loving words has really helped make this possible. So thank you. Let's do this. Let's continue on the good work of, you know, rebuilding our communities and freeing our people. Amen. There you have it, John Bang. Appreciate it.